a little bit more about the meaning of your book, Snakes in the Garden. Like, what made you come up with that title? Well, actually, that concept is a biblical concept that I came up with. I think about you know, Adam and Eve, and you know, when we look at snakes, snakes always depict uh, messed up character. I would say, you know, part of the person. And then you know, when I came up with that concept, I said, you know, there's all kind of different kinds of snakes. You know, you got the garden snake, you got the rattlesnake, and uh, then you got the black monk. Now, this sentence that was given was a death sentence. The only way I was supposed to came out of prison was in a casket. You see? But God, I gotta give God the glory. But God, as you see, I'm sitting up here doing an interview with you now, so I mean, we, we know that didn't happen. So yeah, I was, it was like unbelief. I mean, I was like frozen, because I couldn't believe she had given me a life sentence. Actually, I thought the judge was going to actually give me 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, for a nonviolent crime, and actually it was the drag conspiracy, they really didn't have no drugs on me. It was all uh, the testimony, all my drugs came from the testimony of my co-defendant, my right-hand man, he testified against me. So that's that's where they got all their drug amount. Right by a judicial right to give me uh, According to the guidelines, give me a life sentence without parole because uh, uh, that's where the statutes were listed this under the new drug law. Hmm. You know, three strikes you out. So I had two little minor strikes, which was felons, a gram of coke and a half a gram. So they took this third uh, conviction and uh, that was three strikes. So they gave me a life sentence basically because I wouldn't testify against the person that I was getting my drugs from. And um, I was a, a kingpin, a good run, seven kilos. We got to remember, I started out street level, seven grams and ounces and all like that. So I, I, I think I had a run of what you would classify as being a kingpin. And that is when you're moving multi kilos of, of cocaine. So I would say about five or six years, uh, you could, I, I guess I would have qualified to be labeled a kingpin. Maybe $10,000 trying to open up a nightclub, which was. Um, wasn't easy at all. Uh, I didn't have money to buy. I think what really helped me too, doing that, the time I opened it up, it was the disco craze was going on. It just came into uh, our culture. And so I think that helped me a lot. I had three clubs here in Memphis. Uh, the first club was uh, called Club Illusion. Built a building down on uh, downtown Maine. Uh, in fact, I remember the address like it was yesterday, 492 South Main Street. The phone ring. When the phone rang, my counselor got up and answered the phone. And uh, he just said hello, and he didn't say anything. Then he told me, telephone. He handed me the telephone. Well, actually, he told me, I walked over to the telephone. And I'm saying, telephone. You know, who's calling him? Who could be calling me? Anyway, when I get to the phone, it was uh, my lawyer, uh, attorney Lodholt. And uh, he said, Jimmy, he said, uh, you received clemency from the President of the United States. And I just froze, you know. I, it was surreal. I'm saying, are, are they playing a joke on me? Because <laughs> yeah, because normally what they do, the other people that had gotten clemency prior, you know, they're working up to the last day, last hour. And then I express myself better writing than I can, you know, speaking. So uh, I just sat down, and like I said, I had plenty of time to do it. And, and I, I did it. Actually, the, the book I wrote 13 years ago while I'm in prison. And I spent many hours, I'm talking about three and four o'clock in the morning. I would start writing in the evening, like, like four or five, it really was cut off. So now, it's a three-part series. I haven't wrote the third series. That's, and that's my, uh, the last part would be after exiting prison, what has happened to me post-prison. Christ came into my life within two months of being incarcerated. I was led to Christ, and there was just, man, my whole life changed. Uh, when they said to become a new creation in Christ, it truly happened to me. I, was, I really saw myself as a sinner that needed Satan. Man, listen, that was the most fearful things in the world, I'm telling you. Can you imagine being locked up for 27 years, and all of a sudden, because when I, when I got locked up, they didn't even have the DVDs. They didn't have smartphones, none of this, you see? So, actually, when I came out of prison, it was like being a dinosaur caught up in it. <laughs> in a you know, uh, modern world. I went from the halfway house straight that Friday when they cut the band off my leg. I went that evening. We flew from Atlanta near the 
Disney World with my grandkids and my son. Wow. That was beautiful, man. 